We're in a pretty amazing time where someone with a home shop can own a laser engraver like this one, which has the power to cut through solid wood. This particular laser is touted as one of the most powerful in its class. It is made by Atomstack, and it's the X20 Pro model. It has a quad laser setup, providing a total of 20 watts of optical power, which is pretty high for a hobbyist laser. So how powerful is that really? And what types of material can it cut into or cut through? In this video, we're gonna find out, so stick around. These machines are called laser engravers and they do a great job of engraving. But a laser with this amount of power can also cut right through some materials and that's what I'm mostly interested in. So we're going to put this laser up against some materials you or I might like to cut and maybe some materials we may not want to cut. And let's see what happens. One of these materials is the seventh hardest material of its type on the planet as well. And I'll also show you some cool things you can do with a laser after we see the results. Okay, so first of all, if you'd like a laser like this one, you need to have it contained or well vented. For the sake of shooting this video, I'll be doing this with the doors open in my workshop. And here are the materials I would like to test. We have some cardboard, solid white pine. All of these are going to be half inch thickness or close to it. The white pine has a hardness of 380 on the Jenka hardness scale. OSB, which is pretty low density. I don't really know the hardness of that one. We have solid Douglas fir, hardness of 660, solid beech, 1300, solid hard maple, 1450, Baltic birch plywood, 1470, solid ash, 1320. And next we have solid African blackwood, which happens to be the seventh hardest wood on the planet with a Janka hardness of around 3,670. Now to help this laser out, it does come with an air assist unit, which is a small air pump, and it does two things. It clears the smoke from the path of the laser, and it also cools the material down around the laser beam to reduce charring. Now I don't have any expanded honeycomb cutting sheet, which is an add-on for these types of machines. So I'm just using the stock sheet of stainless steel, which came with the laser. A honeycomb below would provide a better looking result on the back of those pieces. Before I jump the gun, I think I need to do a sample to see if there's any problems with my test setup. I'm still learning a bit, so there could be something I haven't thought of. So I have here a piece of white pine, and let's just see what happens. So as you can see, the slow speed really produces a very nice organic shape. Actually, there's a pretty big problem here. Cutting this slow is causing embers to form and the air assist is actually helping to speed up the burning process. So that's not gonna work. Pine is very low density and that's likely one of the reasons it burns up so quickly. But I should mention that this test actually exaggerates the problem. I wanna use this to cut through materials, but I'm making a pocket instead. Cutting through is only one line and scorching on a single line path will be pretty minimal, as you can see here. So a little adjustment to the speeds of the test and we should be good. I have raised all the speeds by 300 millimeters per minute. I've also added a second test to each piece, which will run a second pass at each speed. This pocketing idea might not be the best, but I'm just going to go ahead with it anyway to see if I can learn something. Whoop. Something's gone off a little bit here. It's too late. I'm just gonna have to go with it So I was keeping a really close eye on the pieces and I could see that there was a problem with the OSB It looked like it was beginning to smolder inside So I carefully removed that piece and replaced it with another to let the test continue So I think we're good. I'll keep an eye on it and let it finish up And let's turn them over to see if any of them cut through. You can see the cardboard cut through, of course, the pine, the fir, and the spruce, and even the ash. A single pass at 600 millimeters per minute seems to be really close to double the depth of the cut at 1200. So there doesn't seem to be any clear advantage to moving too slowly, and too slow will burn, so multiple passes probably makes more sense. With the exception of MDF and African blackwood, there's a fairly predictable pattern. 
half the speed is close to two times the depth. And it looks like it's going to be possible to cut right through most of these woods. So let's take one of the softest woods and one of the hardest and see what it actually takes to cut through them. So I've set up a test for the softest wood, which is pine. I'm going to do two passes to avoid burning. The slowest speed, 150 millimeters per minute, then 175, then 200. And I've raised the wood away from the table to minimize the problem of the staining on the bottom as well. And we can see with the pine on all the speeds we were able to get right through, so that's not too bad. And now the second hardest wood, which is maple. I've added two more passes to this one, all at the same speeds. So we have four passes for each. None were 100% cut through, but the 150 millimeters per minute was really close. So we'll just add one more pass. And from there, I was able to come up with a chart for the other woods based off of their hardness, which should get us pretty close. I'm trying not to go too far below 150 millimeters because of burning that I think is going to happen. And we'll see how it performs on each of these woods, including African blackwood, So no problems with spruce or fir. Beech did need one more pass, but ash was a piece of cake and could have had one less pass. Maple and Baltic birch plywood were both no problem. But MDF also needed another pass. And the last one, our hardest and darkest wood, didn't even come close. Instead of cutting through, it was kind of catching fire and smoldering but I'd like to actually open this one up and see what happened inside. So let's do that now. I think the laser is gonna be a usable tool for woodworking with the correct enclosure. It's not gonna be super fast, but it does seem to have some accuracy to it, even at a half an inch thick. It does leave the edges black. It also smells like fire, both of which aren't really a problem for the projects I want to use it for. So here are some projects I whipped up quickly. Just a few ideas that I had for around the house and around the shop. This is a card holder that I designed. It works great for kids or adults too. And this is a storage bin for the shop. You can have an entire wall full of these. They're easy to take off of the wall and put onto your workbench when you need them. If you're interested in this laser, the Atomstack X20 Pro or others like the new X30 Pro laser, which should have even greater depths of cut in solid wood, check out the links in the description below. Thanks to Atomstack for providing this laser for testing. And if there are other woods or materials you'd like to see tested, let me know in the comments below. And if you have some insight into how to cut through the seventh hardest wood on the planet, I'd like to hear from you. I hope you enjoyed the video and found it helpful. Don't forget to subscribe, take care, and we'll see you on the next one.